Hi everybody, this is Miss Brenner. I hope you're all doing well and staying happy and healthy. Uh, we are going to be talking about characterization in our notes today. We're going to be talking a little bit in depth about the literary tools used by authors to improve their writing through characterization and then connecting this back to the Enneagram activity that we were doing earlier. In your Schoology classroom for today, you should see a Google set of uh, notes in a Google Doc. So please make sure that you have that open. You will need that assignment to complete this Edpuzzle. Alrighty, so character, characterization in general. Characterization is the process by which the writer reveals the personality of a character. The personality the literary character presents to the reader contributes to the central meaning of the literary work. By getting to know the characters of a story and how they function, we learn something about the author's perception of individuals and life. So in your Google Doc, anytime you see ellipses or three dots, you're going to complete the sentence. And then you may also see times where a box is blank, so you're going to put it into your own words. So these are just some of the terms that we are going to talk about, such as uh, when determining a character, whether they are flat or round, whether they're an individual or a stereotype, whether their personality is static or dynamic, and we will do that by talking about direct and indirect characterization. Some other terms that I'm sure you're already familiar with that we're going to go over fairly quickly are protagonist and antagonist. So as far as the term protagonist, this is the main character of a narrative. It's the central character who engages the reader's interest and empathy. And then the antagonist is the character or force or collection of forces in fiction or drama that oppose the protagonist and gives a rise to the conflict of the story. So pretty much the opponent. I would like you to put that in your own words so that way it's easy to remember. These are terms that you most likely already know. Things that may be new are talking about round versus flat characters. So round characters are characters uh, that they're convincing, they're true to life, a character that has many different and sometimes even contradictory personality traits. So just like an average person. A character that undergoes some type of change or dynamic development in the story, often because of something that happens to them. So that would be our round character type. And if I'm going too fast, please feel free to pause the Ed Puzzle so that way you can write down the bolded underlined portion of statements. Flat characters, so also static. A character that has only one or two personality traits. They're flat characters, so they don't change throughout the course of the story. They remain static. They are characters that represent stereotypes or shallow societal expectations. Flat characters are often symbolic and support a deeper message or theme created by the author. So although we might automatically assume round characters have more purpose, and emphasis towards the underlying meaning of a story, uh, that's not always true. Flat characters have a tool-like purpose as well. So next we're going to be looking at how authors create characterization within their writing using direct versus indirect uh, literary skills. So we can learn about a character's mental, emotional, and moral traits, either through direct or indirect characterization. Direct characterization is the narrator or another character tells the narrator or another character tells us about a person, what they're like. The words are directly written in the book. So for example, Jordan at five is a sweet but mischievous girl who loves to dress up and play pretend games. In this example, uh, it's directly characterized by the author who describes the girl's nature and tells the reader about what she loves. So this is your most basic form of characterization. As we move into indirect characterization, this shows things revealed through personality of a character that is not directly stated in the story. And there's four different methods that this can occur in. This would be speech, thoughts, effects, and actions. With speech, the two things that we're typically going to be looking at is what does the character say and how does the character speak, so their tone. 
For example, the husband was fussing at his wife. The bag of lettuce is half empty. Why didn't you try to get one that had more in it? I can't believe you didn't look at the bag more carefully at the grocery store. Through his words, the husband is characterized as picky and critical. The author does not have to tell us these characteristics directly. We can perceive that from his tone and word usage. The next category for indirect characterization is going to be thoughts. So thoughts would be what is revealed through the character's private thoughts and feelings. For example, as he sat brooding in his room, Caleb thought of how his baby sister spoiled everything. He thought of how things used to be before she arrived. He wanted to go to Disney World and have fun for his fourth birthday. He got an idea. Buck, their neighbor, feeds the dogs when they go out of town, so Buck could come and feed the baby when he came to feed the dogs. He loved to play with her, and he could do that. He got up to tell his mother. Here we see the thoughts of a little boy about his frustrations with his new baby sister and the solution he found to this problem. Next category is effects. So these are effects on other characters. And we would think about what is revealed through the character's effect on other people and how do other characters feel or behave in reaction to that character. For example, after visiting my sister Jean, Frances said she really knows how to get a lot of storage into every space, doesn't she? Yes, I answered. Organizing is a fun challenge for her and is what she enjoys. She never stopped, but keeps reorganizing in a better way. So from this conversation between Frances and Jean, uh, we find out about the sister. The reader gets a picture of Jean's organizational skills. And then actions is our last form of indirect. We want to think about what does the character do and how does the character behave. So for example, Julie began fixing supper while the children played. First she washed the romaine lettuce with grapefruit seed oil. Then she got out the mill and ground the corn. After it was ready, she used honey to replace sugar in the recipe and put the cornbread in the oven. The dried beans were simmered in the crock pot. She washed and cut up the fresh strawberries they had picked that morning for dessert. Through her actions, we see a conscious mother concerned about the nutrition uh, in the family meal. She cares enough to work hard in preparing meals the way she thinks is best. And we can definitely sense that from her actions. So these are our four different categories of indirect. And that really wraps up characterization uh, as far as a mechanism to uh, present a deeper meaning within a story. So we are going to use these notes in connection to the Enneagram, and we'll talk more about that in class. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.